Welcome, boys, to another week of lessons. This week, our lesson is going to be about Abraham. Abraham was a man from Ur who left his home to follow God and would later change his name from Abram to Abraham, which means father of many. And he was promised many, des many descendants from God. Abraham and his wife Sarai were very old and didn't have any children, but he trusted in God and God gave them a son named Isaac. Today we're going to start reading our story. It's going to be in two different parts. So if you open your Bibles to Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, we're going to start in chapter 12 and read verses 1 through 7. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Now for the next part of our reading, we're going to switch to Genesis chapter 15 and read chapters or verses 1 through 21. After this, the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. You are your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is of your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to them, So shall your offspring be. So Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all of these to him, cut them in two, and arranged them in halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then the birds of prey came down on the carcass, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said, Know for certain that for four hundred years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own. Then they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation, and they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will come out with great possessions. You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come here in for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun has set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the two pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land. From the Wadi of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, Kenizzites, Canmonites, Hittites, Prezites, Rephites, Amorites, Canaanites, Jerishites, and Jebusites. So in the passage, we 
listen and hear that God has made a lot of promises to Abraham. And every time that Abram or Abraham followed in the way of God, it says that it was counted as righteousness. How old was Abram when he left Haram? In the story, we read that he was 75 years old. And if you think about it, that's probably about as old as your grandparents, or at least my grandparents, are about 75, 80 years old. Can you imagine at that age, just packing up everything you have and leaving to a new city? Or your grandparents right now, just taking everything and leaving the family to follow God? That took so much trust and strength of Abram to put in God. And that's what we're called to do. And what promise did God make to Abram? There are so many in there of the story that we just read, things of promises of children, even though he was old and well beyond the years of having children, promises of land and descendants and a kingdom that God was going to build from him. How does it make you feel to know that God always keeps his promises? No matter what God said in there, he followed every one of those promises and covenants that he made with Abram. Abram did have a son, and from that son, the tribe of Israel came. God did give the land back to the Israelites after years of them being in persecution with the Egyptians. Now we know from Bible stories that the Israelites get enslaved from Egypt and then Moses rescues them and they go back to the promised land. But Abram didn't know that. He didn't know that story because that hadn't happened yet. So he had to trust God that everything that he said was true. And we can see from reading through the rest of the Old Testament and even into the New Testament that God kept every promise in the covenant that he made with Abraham. Are there any promises that God has made to you? If we read the Bible, he's still keeping his promises from the Old Testament and the New Testament. Promises of coming and saving us from our sins. Promises of building a place and preparing it for us called heaven. Promises of always being there for us no matter what. Even if we can't physically see him, we know that he knows all of our thoughts and all of our actions. He knows when we need him and we can just think a simple thought of God help and we know that he will be there. He will provide a way out from any situation that he puts us in or that we get put in from our choices. <clears throat> there might not be a specific thing that you can think that God, you heard him promise to you but we can read the Bible and we can see all the promises that he made and that those promises are promises for us also and that he will keep those and is keeping those and has kept those throughout time. I hope that you get a chance to, to read the story yourself and in your journal write down some of your thoughts. Maybe something that you didn't know before or something that you did but just means something a little bit different from the last time you heard it. I hope that you'll join us next week when we discover a new character from the Old Testament.